Welcome. Well, now what we want to do is look at managing your GSA. At this point, we assume you've uh, set the search appliance into your network, you've configured it, it's been racked, it's connected to your network, you are crawling content, you are serving results, and now what you like to do is know what the day-to-day -day maintenance is on the search appliance. It's a very limited set, it's not a, it's not a heavy, um, it's, appliance, it's an appliance, so it's not a heavyweight administrative task. But there are some steps you want to perform on a regular basis. One, you want to make sure that you update your software. We'll show you how to update it, where to get it. Two, you want to make sure that you monitor the crawl and serving processes on the search appliance. The administration console has some monitoring capabilities, but you'll want to go one step further and we'll talk about what to do. We'll show you how to configure and, and deal with multiple appliances. Um, it's just a lightweight introduction to mirroring and distributed crawling. So this comes into play, especially when you're doing software updates. We'll show you how to submit a support ticket so that you'll know what information is critical to get your ticket rolling as fast as possible, how to set up your search appliance for remote support so that Google, uh, and Google engineers can go on the box and look at the log files. Then we'll find more resources. Let's uh, first show you how to get access to documentation that we're going to be re that's related to this discussion. You go to the URL developers.google.com slash search appliance documentation. And this is the main documentation page. Down here there's a section called troubleshooting and support. So here's uh, links to how to work with support, how to do some basic troubleshooting, how to get remote access set up for technical support. This will be important so the engineers can go on your box and view log files. And then how to design a search solution. This includes uh, this includes how to set up the crawling and serving monitoring process that we'll talk about. And then if you have to replace hard disks or power supplies. So a good place to turn for resources. Well, let's talk about the software. The search appliance has software on it that gets updated periodically. We post those software updates to our, our uh, support portal. You'll have to log in there and uh, download the software from there and install it on the search appliance when the updates become available. Reason for this is the search appliance is sitting behind your firewall. We don't have access to your, uh, your, fire, your servers behind your firewall. You'll have to make the request to get the software and download it to you. To check whether you need updates for your software, go to the search appliance, look at its version, go to the support portal, look at the latest version, and compare the two. So under Search Appliance, what you do is click the About button. So log into Admin Console on one of the pages, like the home page. You'll see the About link at the bottom. Click it. This displays your version of the software. There's going to be two versions that you look at. One is what we call the software version, and the other is called the system version. This is the the system version is the underlying operating system kernel, and the software is the search appliance application that sits on top of it. You'll see here is an appliance ID. This is a unique identifier for your search appliance. This is important. You'll make sure you send this in support tickets. The version in this case is 614, and there's a patch release called G28. Now let's go to the support portal and compare its version. We go to this URL, google.com slash enterprise slash portal. And here you'll have a user ID and password that is given to you when you first purchase the search appliance. This user ID and password may have been given to somebody inside of your marketing or sales group that purchased the appliance, so you might need to check with them to find out what this user ID and password are. Uh, I'm going to put in my user ID and my password. This account that I have set up is for a lot of different, I have all the Google applications and products available, so when I click on resources, I'm going to see quite a few resources available. On the home page, here's some latest updates um, and announcements. Under cases, you can open up support tickets and view the case status on your tickets. You also have this notion of a, 
uh, an administrator that has access to everybody. You, you may have more than one contact in Support Portal in your company. And so one person can be the administrator of all those contacts. And when they submit tickets, that one administrator can go in and view all the, the cases and all the status. Under resources, here's where you'll see the latest versions of the software. Since I have all these products with the search appliance and, and Google Apps and Earth and Maps, mine is going to be at the bottom, but yours may be right at the top if you just have the search appliance. Here's the software updates for the search appliance. Here's the connector updates for connector software. And here's also advisories and summaries. Click on the link. It takes me to the software update page. Down below, I'll see hardware versions that are, this applies to and the latest version of the software right here. So it's G, uh, 614 G20, uh, G28 patch 2. And I can upgrade from this old version here. If I have a previous version of the Search Appliance software in this example, I would have to first upgrade my software to 614 G28 before I can go to G28 patch 2. When, it, when you go to install the uh, software, you'll click on the update instructions. There's also a release notes link over here. And it's very important to read the first uh, few paragraphs of the install instructions. If you've never done this before, I recommend you read through it completely. There'll be issues that are fixed and the patch installation steps. There, since this is a patch installation, the steps are going to be very straightforward, and there's just going to be one software link to update. This is going to be the, uh, this is the link. I'll copy this. I'll go into my version manager on the search appliance. Version manager is maintained on port 9941, and you'll have to use the admin user account to log in. This is the root administrator on the, this is, uh, it's not the root administrator, it's the, um, it's the main administrator on your search appliance. Every search appliance has an admin account. When you set up the network configuration, you, were, you entered in the password for this admin user and wrote it down somewhere. Uh, this is now when you'll have to use it. I'll copy and paste the link. Here's, here's the versions of my software right now. And I'll click Install. If I have mirroring or unification set up, sometimes on certain types of features like dynamic navigation, there's extra installation steps. But since this was a simple patch upgrade, they were not highlighted up here. But check to see if there's any, any types of configuration issues that apply to you. You might have to, you might have to disable mirroring or disable unification in the, in the process of doing updates. Now, this is a patch update. Um, this is, uh, if, you're, if you're updating the software, so uh, when it comes to updating software, there's two things to consider. Are you doing a kernel system upgrade, or are you doing a application upgrade? And in this case, I just have one link. So it's just going to be that, uh, I believe it's just going to be that, let's see which one it is. Click the Continue button. Mm. Since this is a patch, I think it's just going to make some light updates. When you have to do a, a kernel system upgrade, you have to copy and paste that link in first, perform that installation, and then go back in and perform the application update on top of it. So you may have two update processes uh, for one version. Let's see what the status is. You can come back to the version manager page and the latest status on the update will be displayed. Here's some more information about software updates. Um, if you're using SSL certificates on the administration console, then you'll use port 9942. Make sure you research the steps, copy and paste the links. There are no rollbacks. So once you apply the software upgrade for at least the system level um, software, there'll be no rollbacks. What will happen is when you, do a, when you do a system software upgrade, paste the link in, uh, the process starts, and then it, uh, you can check the checksum to make sure that all the software was downloaded. Then you click Continue, and then it'll ask you if you want to reboot the box now. There'll be a reboot uh, 
process that occurs and you may experience 10 to 15 minutes of downtime so you may want to do if you're doing a system software update you want to do that in the off hours if you're using an application software uh, the application upgrade then there's no reboot necessary the index has to be migrated over to the new version now there'll be two instances of the index running simultaneously and this is what will happen you can think of this as being two separate versions of the index there's an original version users can come to port 80 and still run search requests against your old index there'll be a new index that's being uh, configured and you can go to administrate when you go to the admin console on port 8000 you make configuration changes it will affect this new copy of the index and that's where you can you can go to admin console and make changes and you can go to port 7801 as an administrator and run searches on this new index to test it once you're comfortable with the index then you can accept or revert back to the old if you're happy with it you can accept the changes and then what will happen is this the new version of the index will become the, the only index on the search appliance users can come to port 80 and run searches um, if you're not happy with that version of the in, that the version of the software you can revert and that will establish the original index blow, uh, remove the new index and users will continue to make searches on port 80 on the old index and you can make admin console changes in the old index Okay, so two versions of the index, one for users, one for administrator. Test the changes. If you're happy, accept the changes. If you're not, revert back. Now, how to monitor the search appliance. Uh, there, you can go into the, uh, you can set up, you can go into administration console and you can look at uh, various status reports. You can also look and send an email notification to you uh, we saw how to do this in initial network setup at the very first module. This is only a, a, a short, brief report. It tells you whether the what the conditions of the hardware are, whether the disks are working, whether the RAID array is working, uh, what's the temperature on the box, is there any system failure. But it doesn't tell you if crawling and serving is running. There's a lot of processes in the background that, that constitute each of these two tasks. So what you want to do is uh, set up a, a little test uh, module of your own that, that tests the crawling and the serving status. To do this, you'll update a document every 15 minutes. Uh, so you put a document on your web server, and it's probably a dynamically generated HTML page, and put a timestamp in there when, you, when the document gets updated. And do the, run a cron job around this that, that updates it every 15 minutes. In my case, I have on my search appliance, I have a document here under the GSA directory. It's on my Athens web server. And it's, a, it's an HTML page that gets generated by a cron script that just uh, updates every 15 minutes and it puts the latest timestamp in there. The reason for doing this is I want to see, I want to, I want to run a search on this document in the GSA and see how, how recent this timestamp is to my current time. Uh, so if it's more than 15 minutes old, then I know that something's wrong with crawling. If I'm not getting any results, I know something's wrong with serving. So that's all we have to do. Create this document, put a timestamp in it, go to the freshness tuning on the search appliance, Put it into the frequently crawl patterns. And now what I'll do is I'll, I'll run down and I'll see, I'll go to status and reports to see how often it's getting crawled. Here's its crawl history. Notice that it's getting crawled at 130, 122, 117, on average between five and 12 minutes. So it's the crawler is crawling a document twice as frequently as it's changing. And that's what you'd like to see. Now, when it comes time to serve results off the, the appliance and see what, whether it's uh, crawl and serves working, what we can do, this is a, a manual way of, of checking to see if crawling is working. Let's go and see how to do an automated way of checking it. What you do is write a separate script, a second script, and all it does is sends a search request 
with whatever search term you want to look up, like maybe thank you. So you write a, write a small script like in Python or Perl, and all it does is run a search for the term thank you. You'll look for one search result to come back, and you click on the cached link. You see here, you'll look at the, uh, the contents of the document, and you see here the timestamp. It's 1630. That shows that the version on the search appliance that's being served is within 15 minutes of the document that's being changed on the Athens server. So two things to monitor, crawl, and serve. One, create a document uh, and, and update it every 15 minutes with a timestamp. Crawl that document and then run a, uh, run a, uh, create a, a small Python script that makes a search request to your search appliance every 15 minutes and checks to see if the timestamp in the document in the GSA's cache is any different than 15 minutes with the version in the, uh, with the system with the system time. The details of this are in the documentation as well. I pointed you to one of the links for it. Now I'm still updating my software. It looks like the software update's taking a while, so I'll keep coming back to that. Hopefully we'll see the change. If you need to, uh, some other tasks you may need to perform, you may need to do a manual reboot on the search appliance if one of the processes gets stuck. Let's say that crawling is having an issue or serving is having an issue. You could reboot the box. It's a 10 minute process. You'll, you'll experience some downtime when you reboot the box, so do it in off hours. Um, to, do an, to do a manual reboot, you go to Administration, Shutdown, and select Reboot. And then you'll be asked to, are you sure you want to do this? You click Yes, and then it will, the software, the, the Unix operating system will reboot, and the application for the search appliance will come back up. You may also need to reset the index. Uh, this is an operation that's not as common anymore. It was required more uh, when software updates required an index refresh. Now what we do is when we upgrade the software, we see a button that says, do you want to migrate the index? And you just click that migrate button and, and the index will be migrated from the old version to the new version. Sometimes your index can get corrupt, especially during like uh, development time when you're first trying to get content into the search appliance. and you're testing things out and things aren't working. You can come in here and click reset on the index. It will ask if you really want to do that and then you click yes. Now, a note of caution on indexing reset. Uh, two things. One, it can take time. It could take days. It could take weeks if you have a huge index. Millions of documents, uh, it might take weeks. The second thing about resetting the index is that any feeds that you've pushed to the search appliance at, to this point will have to be resubmitted and the, all the content in those feeds will have to be resent because the, the, when you reset the index, you wipe away all the indexing information, documents, metadata, all that's gone. Also exporting uh, configuration files to perform a regular backup is a good idea. So we've gone through and in, in this example we've configured crawling, we may have uh, set up crawler access, we may have set up freshness tuning, we may have created collections and front ends. All of this information is stored in a configuration file for the search appliance. And you can export this configuration file, save it on disk somewhere, and use it as a backup. If you have a problem with the search appliance, you can import the configuration file to, to reset all your settings back to where they were originally at. To do this, go to Administration, click Import Export. You'll note that there's uh, two things here. Unification settings will be refreshed. And also, policy ACLs will be, have to be imported and exported separately. To export, you give it a passphrase. Click Export. Here's an example of what your text file will look like with all your configuration settings. To import it, give the passphrase that you used before, select the file, and click import. It may take about a, uh, a minute for the configuration file to come in. 
If you're dealing with multiple appliances where you have mirroring set up, mirroring is a way of having one search appliance do all the crawling and, all the and you set up all your configuration on that box, then you configure mirroring and the configuration will be exported to another search appliance along with the index and then users can run uh, searches on either one of the boxes. This is good for a hot backup and a failover situation. It's highly desirable that you have a hot backup, if, especially if your search is critical. So if you can't afford downtime on search, what you'll need to investigate is purchasing a hot backup. It uh, comes with a, hef a hefty discount so that you won't have to pay the full price on the search appliance. When you do this, uh, there'll be one criteria that you cannot use the search appliance for load balancing and, and handling. You can set it up in a load balancing configuration, but you cannot use it to double your query load, double the amount of users that can come and run search requests on the search appliance. It's a good idea to, to set this up. You'll put it possibly before, uh, in front of a load balancer. If you're running secure searches for secure content, you'll want to make sure the sessions are set to sticky. If your index is bigger than one search appliance, you may have distributed crawl and serve set up. So if you go beyond 30 million documents, you'll have to purchase multiple GSAs to create a larger index. And to do this, you'll set them up in distributed crawl and serve fashion. Uh, you'll set up the configuration on the primary, the master node, and then the slave nodes receive the configuration. And the search appliances divvy up and, and split the workload for crawling. And then users can, uh, a portion of the index gets created in one search appliance, a portion of the index gets created uh, in the other search appliance. If one node goes down, then you lose the documents in that portion of the index unless you have a hot backup setup. So you could set up, in this example, you could set up four GSAs. One is the master with a hot backup, and one is the slave with a hot backup. And then if, if uh, the slave or the master goes down, you can promote the replica to either master or slave. This will be important when you go to run your software updates. Make sure you check for any steps, any uh, caveats with those configurations at the top of the installation instructions. When you go to submit a support ticket, it's very important. Here's the, this is the support portal login. It's very important to make sure you include these four pieces of information. In fact, when you go through the wizard to, to create a support ticket, it will now ask you for those pieces of information. The appliance ID allows support engineers to determine your root administration uh, password. That's the root administrator on the systems, on the, at the system level. They will be able to view log files on the processes. They will not be able to get access into your administration console. They'll not be able to see any of the search results. They'll not be able to see any of the index. All they're looking at is the log files in the system to be able to troubleshoot uh, an issue for you. Software version is important. If, uh, if you don't list this, the appliance ID or the software version, the first thing that support's going to do is kick the ticket back to you and ask you to provide that information. The remote access method will also need to be uh, determined. And here we recommend that you set up remote support access ahead of time. Uh, go to the initial setup training module to find out the steps on how to do that. There are several different options for remote access. One of them could be through a support call uh, using a phone. You could have a, uh, a, a WebEx type session set up, or you could have remote SSH login on the operating system. And you'll need to list that method so, that search apply, uh, so the search engineers know how to access your box. And then the steps to reproduce, this is very important. If you have a, let's say, a crawling issue, let's say you have a, a URL that's not showing up in search results, and you've already diagnosed uh, and, and checked to make sure it's in the index, then make sure that you say that it's already in the index. Make sure you tell them which URL is not showing up in the search results. Make sure you tell them which collection the user is running it against, which front end they're running the search from. If you give all this information, then it's be much easier for the systems and engineers to troubleshoot it. And finally, the resources we mentioned here, LearnGSA.com is where you can go to to get uh, additional training. Documentation is available on uh, the documentation page that we saw, which is at developers.google.com slash search appliance slash documentation. Now let's go back and check uh, our last 
our software update and see where we stand. Oh, we're still downloading 17 percent. It's going to be a long ways away. Once the software is downloaded on here, it'll be a continue button. You click continue. It may ask you to reboot. You can reboot the box then or defer till later. Um, if it's a software update, there will be some additional steps to go through. You'll uh, it'll you'll choose whether to migrate your index or whether to do a fresh, uh, uh, clean re-indexing. Remember, if you do a re-indexing, it will rebuild the index from scratch. It may take days or weeks. Then if you're uh, updating the, the software, the last thing you do is do some testing on port 7801, uh, and then choose whether you want to accept or revert the software. That's it for managing the search appliance. Uh, like I said, it's a lightweight appliance. Not much administration involved. Make sure you check your software updates on a regular basis. Keep it, uh, keep it in sync with the latest software versions because you don't want to have to, if you have an issue, you don't want to have to go through several software updates to get to the current version. Remember to set up a process for crawl, uh, monitoring crawl and serve. It'll take a few minutes to create two scripts, one to create the document every 15 minutes, and one to run a search request against the GSA every 15 minutes. If you're using multiple GSAs, when you do a software update, make sure you check to see uh, any special instructions for unification, mirroring, or distributed crawl. And when you support, submit the support ticket, make sure you include the important information that we listed. That's it, and thank you.